Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly give or take, I think a little bit early this time, update on the various miniatures that have been getting painted for the channel for the games we cover here. And I'm sure you've noticed that this week there is something a little bit special because there is a mystery box. And it could be anything, it could even be a bolt. But first we're going to take a look at the miniatures. We have a bunch from Blood Bowl. Oh, I did it. Blood Bowl. Nope, it's Bloodborne. Bloodborne, the miniature game. Trying very hard not to keep doing that. Bunch of stuff from that, a little bit of bot war that you already have seen in the most recent battle report if you watched that. And then a bunch of retro Batman miniature game stuff from early 2nd edition or late 1st edition, one of the two. So as always we'll start from the left and work our way right. You have seen a couple of these miniatures if you saw the, the Chalice Dungeon test playthrough of how the Blood Bloodborne, caught myself, Bloodborne miniature game plays. So this is my chosen hunter of all the ones available, he is from the Kickstarter. Uh, expansion stuff. He's not one of the base box ones. He's the hunter with the burial blade, my weapon of choice. It's a long sword that turns into a scythe. And again, everything here painted with contrast as always, with a little bit of extra paint thrown in, including astral granite. A lot of astral granite on these bloodborne ones, and that's just on the base with a wash over the top. His armor, it's lead belter silver, black templar, and a little bit of ooh skeletal horde for the bandages on the blade and snakebite leather for the brown. The hunters are a little bit misproportioned compared to the monsters, I feel. They look a little bit stumpy. You will also have seen one of these werewolves, but first let's take a look at the one lamp I've painted just so that we can have that where I start. This is one of the Kickstarter extras. It's, instead of having tokens for lamps, you can have actual summoning bells or whatever they were called. I think they were just called lamps, weren't they? With the messengers beneath. Not much uh, contrast work done on this really. Greasier base, lead belter silver, a little bit of talisar blue for the glow of the lamp. Although I think, like I looked at the paint job on the official paint job for these and it was blue and if I remember the game rightly, wasn't it purple? <laughs> like a, a lavender, but maybe, but still. So I don't remember which one of these werewolves I used in the game. I think it was this one because I hadn't done a blue eyes one yet. And I wanted a blue eyes one because they're used in the in the story as being a little bit tougher. So these are fun. Any miniature that has like a lot of detail in its um, fur always ends up looking quite nice with contrast applied because the fur, it gets into the creases, the raised parts stay light, so it keeps that fur effect, which is very nice. So this werewolf has a lot of Basilicanum Grey snakebite leather for his tattered robes that he was in when he transformed into a beast and copious amounts of blood for the blood gods, the Citadel blood paint. You'll see that across all of the Bloodborne stuff here because I mean, if you've played the game, the game is very, very bloody. It's got an 18 rating for a reason. So yeah, that's basically it for him. Obviously they become they come pre-assembled, so it's a little bit hard to get into every nook and cranny, but in terms of what you'll see on the table at that kind of distance, it, it, it's okay. And that same system I also used for this one. And there's four of each minion. I think for like a solo game, you're probably not going to need more than two, maybe three, probably. But I'll still try and get them all done. And I did him with the blue eyes because if, again, if you played the game, there's some tougher variants of enemies that have like the blue eyes. But exact same colors used for him. Then we have the hunt, huntsman's minion, the large lad who likes punching with bricks. So I used militarum green for his cape. Skeletal hard for all the bandages on his arms, stomach as well, Gulliman flesh for his skin tone, Basilicanum grey for his old man hair, and oh, that's the, the Space Wolves contrast paint I would never remember the name of. Space Wolves grey for his denim jean type effect, and some grey on his brick as well, and then obviously again, copious amounts of blood for the blood god. I really like this miniature actually, he's, he's intimidating in size, contrast took well to him in terms of detail, I feel. Oh, and Agrat's sort of shade over the entire thing as well, just to give him that, that lived-in look, I guess you could say. So again, one of these down, going to have to paint at least two more, I think, of the four, but ideally I want to get all four done. So then we have the Hunter's Mob. Very annoying to paint, because it's three miniatures on one base, pre-assembled, so it's hard to get in, everything. Tried to match their colours from the game, and it's basically a mix of the same colours that were on the Huntsman's Minion as well with a little bit of uh, Blood Angels Red for the, sort of, here we are. A little bit of Blood Angels Red with the yellow for their torches they're holding, Lead Belter Silver. 
These are going to be annoying to do all four of, but I'm actually quite happy with how this one turned out. And the colours are close to what they were in the game, so I'm not too fussed with that. I think it turned out okay. That one from the back looks a little bit just like a hippie, I will say. But from the front, he's weird, and actually if you look at them, they've all got exceptionally long arms. Like it's misproportioned, but on purpose because they're a bit off in the game, because they're mutating. So, oh, he doesn't. Well, yeah, he does actually. This arm holding the axe is overly long. All their left arms are overly long. So it's, it's, not, it's just not quite right. And that's on purpose. That's how they were in the game. They're very weird. So next we have Not Shockwave and King Gills in his crab armor from Bot War. And you will have seen these in the most recent battle report if you watched it. Give it a chance if you haven't. So Shockwave is kind of like Megatron's toti who lives on Cybertron. This is obviously not him, this is just someone that is somewhat closely designed, so I painted it to look like him. He is called Electro Tyrant in the game, and despite him having a mace-type weapon, he's actually entirely ranged-based. He's horrible in close combat, but he's very good in ranged. He didn't have the best showing due to an exceptionally bad bit of luck in the battle report, but one of my favourite miniatures from the bot war range is I, I love electrical type powers in general and this is a very cool in motion like channeling power into his whatever he's holding to blast someone just a very nice mix now when i did i did shineless purple contrast it was a bit too dark so a dry brushing over the top with gene stealer gene stealer hide to line up same kind of uh, thing i do when painting like joker miniatures to brighten up a little bit as well but he, the, the bot war stuff I always do a non oil wash rather than agrax because I feel like that suits mechanical things better. And this is the King of Atlantis inside a mech suit. A little bit, these are old metal models and they're a little bit tough to hold together. A little bit of Abaddon's hand syndrome on this one, especially with the crab hand. Uh, this is oh, Arkelian Green, I think it's called, contrast. It's the green that's very, very blue, and it very I think it suits like aquatic colours very well. And then the lighter one is ethermatic blue. And Beltane green wash over the, the trident he's holding to give it kind of like, again, that underwater look. Semi-regret not giving him an underwater themed base, but he matches the rest of them. So yeah, two more miniatures then for Bot War. I have... Oh, five more to do for a new faction, and then I think that's it. So last we have from technically Harley Quinn's gang. We have four miniatures from the Batman miniature game. Set from... No, oh, they're a bit too low now, but I'm going to hold them up to the camera anyway. From the Arkham City video game DLC called Harley Quinn's Revenge, but then also they're in Arkham City. So they were associated with Arkham City. They're ex-Joker henchmen who are themed around Harley's kind of whole Harley Quinn visual style hence all the red and black and they're based on the video game designs although I will point out a couple of exceptions in a second a lot of black templar contrast with blood angels as well belt buckles and stuff again snake bite leather and some lead belcher silver and copious amounts of agrax or shade because it's talent in a bottle so the ones I have issues with let's do those two first there is no enemy in Arkham City or Arkham Asylum who is coming at you with a uh, what, even, what even is this a pile driver <laughs> Uh, a, uh, I don't even remember what they're called. Pile driver, I think the wrestling move, but is that actually what the mechanical thing is called as well? Either way, there ain't any hired goons coming at you with one of these in those video games. <laughs> They'd be very memorable, but still, in the uh, about my miniature game, he can and will use this on you. Speaking of which, there's no one coming at you with a chainsaw in either of those video games either. But this henchman with his military pants has a chainsaw. And the chainsaws in the Batman Ministry game are very deadly. Like one of the Back to Gotham's clowns. Well, you can do him as a clown or do him as generic. But he's got a chainsaw as well. There's one of my dog's hairs right there stuck to the base. His military pants are plague bearer flesh with dollops of talisar. Uh, not talisar. Of flesh terror red and... Ooh, military green. Again, just trying to match the official colours. They're all painted up like clowns. He has a black mohawk on top of a black mask, so again, I just copied what you're supposed to do for the official colour scheme. I uh, didn't put any blood on these ones, because uh, like Harley Quinn's gang always seemed less murdery than the other gangs. And then finally, we have, again, from the video games you'll know, they started introducing exceptionally large people. 
So this is the exceptionally large lad for Harley's gang that has a minigun attached to him. So you just hold this around and you have to do a double takedown on him with your partner to, to actually defeat them. Unrealistically large, if we just... There's a normal person. There is the large lad. So a bit silly. And this gun, I think, is quadruple blood, which is exceptionally rare in the video game. It is super deadly, but it's imprecise, so it's very hard to hit people. But if it gets a lucky roll, they could basically wipe out anybody. And again, the same kind of colours. Grey for his pants, and the camo on him is black and Blood Angel's red dollops. Just to, to have that military street camo look. And that is snakebite leather for his ammo pack at the back as well. And clown makeup on his face, again. So as my dog is about to bark, I'll have to do a cut, but then we get to see what's in the box. So I know you want to know what's in the box. It is from Punga Miniatures, and I'm pretty sure it's not some lady's head. It's something I forgot I ordered that took a long, long time to fulfill. So that is a bit of a negative, but I was pleasantly surprised when this arrived because I was like, what is this? So what this is, if we open it, and I haven't really taken a good look at these yet, so we're going to do that now and take a look at the quality of the resin. But they were doing a bunch of miniatures and they did a little set which was a skeletal band. It's just some of the bases. Skeletal band with a lead skeleton singer that looked and was posed suspiciously like Freddie Mercury. And speaking of which, I believe that may be the Freddie Mercury skeleton in this bag. So let's take a look at the quality of this. Yep. So this is his skeletal body. He's posed with like one hand in the air, which is... Now we've got his leg down here with a scepter. Oh yeah, there it is. That's his hand with a scepter. Still attached to the resin. It could have been cleaned up a little bit. There's a lot of unnecessary resin here. But in these bags, not going to go into each one individually, but there's like skeleton bass players, skeleton drummers. Uh, I don't remember. I think there's at least one guitar, but I don't quite remember because again, I totally forgot these existed. I got them just because I thought it was funny, and they were, they were relatively cheap as well. There's like at least six of them in total, I think. Uh, I can't remember, I, like I have no idea what game system these were even made for, if they were made for a game system. It could have just purely been made to be silly, and I, that's why I got them. They're roughly, I would say like, eh, not quite 30 mil scale, like 25 mil, 24 mil, I mean, something like that. Although the bases, yeah, your bases are actually the standard, like, 40k size for troops. So this is, again, another long-term... Oh, there's his face. Hang on, let's see if I can get that in focus. Hey, there we go. He's got a crown. He's the king of skeleton singers. This is just a silly side thing that I, I hopefully will find the time for at some point, because, well, at the very least, if I get them assembled, I can hopefully show them off next time or in the future at some point like what the skeletal band at least looks like as opposed to just a bunch of baggies I can't remember what they cost again no idea uh, who they were making them for, what game system they were making it for I just thought they looked funny and they were relatively fairly priced so I was like I would like a skeletal band that looks like Queen please so that was what was in the box did you guess? if you did I think you're lying but either way that is going to do it for another getting stuff painted by all means feel free to show me the things you've been painting uh, whether you're better than me, worse than me, or anything in between, I don't care. I like seeing painted miniatures. Tweet at me at GamerEND if you want. I try and remember to like and favourite and retweet and everything when I can. And we'll be back within two weeks or so with another update. There'll be a lot more Bloodborne. Hey, did it first try. A lot more Bloodborne miniatures to get through. Hopefully to um, branch into some more games. Waiting on the new releases for Crisis Protocol, which have been delayed again, unfortunately, so no Inhumans yet. We'll try and get them done as soon as possible when they arrive. Also waiting on the February releases from the Batman miniature game. Again, who knows when they're going to arrive. Getting through them, and I am trying to find the time to get through more of the orcs for the, the Blood Bowl team as well. But that is going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do use this as inspiration to get through your own painting, your to-do list. It's the perfect time to do it, it's very relaxing and helps pass the time. Good stress relief as well, in my opinion. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time. Ta-ta for now.